We welcome our listeners to the Friendly Cross European podcast. I'm Carolina from Finland and joining me is Marion from France. We are the Outspoken 2 and we invite you to be your authentic self. In this episode, we are going to talk about job hunting and other workplace shenanigans. This is the second episode. So if you feel like it, go and listen to the first podcast. Welcome and let's go. Hi, how are you, Carolina, today? I'm excellent, actually. I woke up at nine o'clock this morning. No one saw it coming. And how about you? How are you doing? I'm good. Work wasn't that great today. Oh, yeah. I'm working in a lab, but sometimes when there are people missing, I have to like go to places. And I had to spend three hours sitting next to her manhole. And if you don't know what it is, it's the place that leads to sewers. Oh. Yes, that was my job, sitting next to a sewer for three hours. <laughs> That was not fun at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm doing it again tomorrow, so I'm super mad. Ah, oh, okay, I see. And uh, actually, you had a little accident. Yeah, I I have AirPods Pro, and I lost one on the job. Oh. So since I'm going back tomorrow, I hope I will find it there. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, <laughs> it's so far from where I live. It's like at the other side of Paris. So I wasn't going to do like three hours of commute to go to see if it's there. <laughs> Since I'm going tomorrow morning, I'm just hoping it's still there. It's a place where there's not much food traffic or, or people going there. So I'm hoping no one will see it and try to steal it. Mm. So let's hope. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'll keep you posted on the, on the next episode if I have the two or just one. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to pay a fucking hundred, hundred euros to get a new one. The saga of the earpods. Yeah. I'm so mad at me. Oh, no. Your workplace story is actually a good segue to our today's episode. Uh, we were talking about job hunting and what it's like to be unemployed in our countries. And... Um, then we had so much to say that this is part two for the series. We didn't intend this. So like enjoy the improvised episode. Yes. Uh, after one hour of recording, we said, maybe we can stop there and just record another part another time. Yeah, that's true. I actually had to go. Um, Marion wanted to continue uh, recording. Yes. But I had an important date with my grandfather uh, I went to pick berries from his garden. That's a <laughs> very Finnish thing. Were they good? Yes, they are very good. Actually, it seems like I have to buy another refrigerator because mine is full already. Like, I still have some berries at my father's garden that I should pick. And there are some at my boyfriend's mother's, mother's garden that she wants us to pick. And then my uh, father's girlfriend wants to go to the forest to pick blueberries and cranberries with me. And I'm not sure where to put them. <laughs> I have to m buy more space for that. You have to eat them or just find something like a big box and then send them to me. <gasps> oh, yeah. I will eat them. Yeah, yeah. It's delicious. Or freeze them. I don't know. Freeze them and make ice cream. You, you know you can... Mm. Sorry. A big segue. You can make ice cream with frozen berries. <laughs> you just like grind them and then like you put them in a blender. You put a little bit of sugar and then you have ice cream. A very local ice cream if some of you want them. Yeah, my boyfriend's mother does it. And uh, she actually bought a new uh, freezer this year because she had so much berries from her garden that she now has two freezers. Uh, if I remember correctly, she was saying that she has 30 liters of raspberries from her garden just from this year. No way. I, I love them. Just send them to me. I want them. <laughs> yeah. It's so expensive in France to have raspberry. Uh, I think 500 grams. 
it's like four or five euros. Oh, so expensive. Yeah, that's a lot of money. And here I try to have like 32 or 33 liters of berries in my freezer so that I can eat them every morning with my porridge. That's a very Finnish breakfast. Yeah, and that's right. It's good to have berries in the morning. Makes a good start for the day before going to work. <laughs> in Finnish, we have a saying, um, the segway was so long that the donkey died while crossing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a weird, weird, weird translation to it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to say it in Finnish. But just the translation makes me laugh a lot. <laughs> yeah, because well, a segue in Finnish is a donkey's bridge. Oh. So the donkey drowns. <laughs> okay. So let's go back to workplace shenanigans. So because I teased it in the last episode, I think I'll start. I think I'll go kind of in the sexual place right away. So we jump in the... The thing right away. But not in the good way, right? Not in a good way. Because uh, it wasn't my first job. Uh, I was working, actually, I was asked to work in that uh, supermarket. Uh, they called me and said, we need someone to make a few hours a week. Can you do it? So I said, I'm studying full time, so I can like make five hours. It's okay. So I started there and everything was kind of great with my coworkers for the few hours that I started. And then one of my coworkers just wanted to test me, I think, but it was super weird because he asked me, or more truthfully, he told me to suck his beep. That's sick. In the storage of the store. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's very sick. Yeah, and it was telling me, like, if you want to have a better position in this workplace, just suck my... <gasps> oh, my, that's... You know? Oh, <laughs> my God, that's horrible. First day in the supermarket, first day. So because I ha I don't have a lot of boundaries and because I don't want to be, like, stepped on, I said... If I had to suck someone, it wouldn't be you. It would be the manager. <laughs> oh my god, you're so witty. Because he was a coworker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He couldn't do anything for me. So I said that. He was so shocked that he just like walked back and then said, Okay. And then left. And I never heard about it again. Whoa. But you know, I was I think twenty. Something like that. Mm. He was like 30 and and I was like, dude, not gonna happen. <laughs> That's an amazing comeback. Like I would never come up with something like that. Not in a million years. It was the only time where I had a great comeback because another time in the same supermarket. Oh, you stayed? Yeah, because actually my, my parents are friends with the boss, 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 boss of him. <laughs> So I was doing a favor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, and so I stayed in this uh, store. <laughs> and another time, his dad, because he worked with his dad, that's not great. And his dad started to comment because I was wearing lipstick. Mm, naughty. And he started to say, if you're wearing lipstick, it's because you want to put a ring around my... No! No! You can imagine the word. So, son and father, same ideas. And I was like, just, no, I'm just wearing lipstick for me, you know, because I like it. Just leave me alone, please. You're like 60 years old and you have a wife and your son works with you and you say that... And I, I was, I was terrified and I was like... Ugh. Yeah, that's disgusting. That's horrible. This workplace wasn't a great workplace. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I have heard one 
of these similar kind of stories from all of my friends. And it happened in a pre-Christmas party when they were dancing. But like, this is such a foreign world for me. Just listening to that blows my mind. It's not the only story in this workplace. I have more. Oh no, no, it really, you stayed. It's horrible, but it's kind of normal. It's, it's not something that people are not used to. And like every guy on, in the store went to like, to the butcher side of the thing. And they, they talked between men, like very cliche. In my, in my store, they're talking about them, like posing for them and walking for them in bikinis. And I'm disgusted, truly disgusted because I'm like, we are, there is meat. We are a, at the butcher side, there is meat, and they don't see any more value in the meat than in us. That's how I felt. Would you say that's normal in France? Uh, I had some other experience. It's not that bad. Like, it was like a super level at that store. But yeah, you always have it because if it's not your coworkers, if you work in the service industry, it's gonna be. Um, a client uh, I had in my previous store work I had a client that was talking about his girlfriend while giving me a rose and telling me to keep the cash and maybe more mm, that's that's weird you are talking about your girlfriend just right now what are you doing I'm just working leave me alone and all of this just because I said hello when he walked in the store. It's my job to say hello when you walked in the store. I'm not being friendly. I'm not being like sexy and wanted to talk to you and feeling like there is something in between us. There's a vibe. Not at all. It's my job to say hello. <laughs> Actually, I have stories about that because I have uh, worked at like... Um karaoke bars for three years and uh, in different restaurants and especially in this bar it's a small place in a very remote area with maybe 2000 inhabitants and um, there were some men in their 40s and 50s that start drinking at 11 o'clock in the during the day 11 o'clock sorry i have to pause it's a bit early right <laughs> yes I know we have every drinker in France, but still 11, still early for me. Yeah, we we, st we opened at 10, so they couldn't come earlier. They liked me a lot there because I'm a very polite, kind, um, bubbly person, I would, I would say. And um, uh, a good looking woman, obviously. And they, uh, yeah, more than one person actually proposed to me there. And... This is a thing in Finland, like when you ask, you, you see a woman you like and it's her appearance, of course, you don't know her after seeing her once or twice or three times. Uh, you start saying that this is my future wife. And maybe for some women, that's very flattering. Like, yeah, you saw me and you immediately want to marry me. <laughs> but for me, I'm like... Yeah, I, I don't know your name yet. Can we start from there? <laughs> I'm not interested at all. And uh, the, but these guys, they don't like they don't touch you or anything. And then when I say that, no, they are like, why? And I don't I don't want to. And I say, I don't want to. I'm not interested. And then they stop. They are like, but you are so pretty. And I'm like, thank you. And that's it. You're so lucky. I wanted to say it's not normal that it's luck. <laughs> that I say it's not lucky. But in France, we have so much trouble with people not understanding the word no. Oh, yeah. I have had one customer. He saw me and wanted to talk to me when I was hosting karaoke. And this was a very small village, like hours from my workplace. And... Um, he came to the karaoke like setup, standing next to me 
wanting to talk to me. And at one point in the evening, he started touching my ass. And I'm like, Ooh. excuse me, did you just touch my ass? And he was like, no. And I'm like, do you think that I don't know when my ass is being touched? Next time you come close to me, I'm going to get you kicked out. And he pretended to cry in the corner because he couldn't get his way. He was the weirdest client I've ever had in my life. What? He cried like, mm, you so be sorry for me, please. I want to touch you even though if you want, want to. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like crocodile tears, you know. He wasn't really crying. There's no tears coming. And he's like pretending to cry. And then he looks at me and continues to pretend to cry. And when it didn't work, he just stopped and went away. <laughs> like, okay, you are a weird, manipulative person. Go away. It's actually way worse than that. Children do that. Children do that. Not grown people. Children do that, like crying and seeing if someone responds to their crying. And when they see that it's not happening, they just stop because why bother? I'm not saying that every children cries just for attention. I'm just saying sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. So I had a 20 something year old man child there <laughs> trying to play with my ass. <laughs> it was not appreciated. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult. Um, the weirdest and like, yeah, weirdest experience, I think it's with my current work. I hope I haven't told you where I work already because I don't want to get in trouble. But in my current work, there is this guy who is quite old, like too old to work. That still does, but it's not a full-time position. And I'm going to give the excuses right now and then talk about it. I don't think he realized that I didn't like them and I was like weirded out and really uncomfortable with his comments and not realizing that the world has changed and that those type of comments actually don't have any place anywhere but especially in the workplace and I started at this new position like two years ago at the beginning he started making comments on my body on my boobs on my ass on my lipstick again hmm oh you are so provocative with your makeup <laughs> yeah I'm just wearing lipstick and like I'm wearing a lab coat because I work in a lab, so I have a lab coat. And one time he said, oh, you're wearing a lab coat. You shouldn't be wearing any clothes underneath. Oh, no. Like be naked under your lab coat. And I'm like, no, thank you. Well, obviously. I was terrified by him. And he doesn't know that, I think. And he was like saying like, just walk in front of me. It's a house that I want to grab and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, please, I don't want it. And because he's so old and because he's the only one that is close to my boss, like the big boss of my company, like he's a friend of my big boss, I didn't want to get in trouble. I was in my trial period, so I didn't have like a steady job yet. So I didn't want to do anything that would compromise my job. I needed it. So I did nothing. I didn't say anything to him or my managers, but I talked to my coworkers. And like every day I was going into my coworker and I was saying, I, I cannot deal with it anymore. And it, I, it made me cry. I was crying every day because I couldn't deal with his remarks all the time. And we had like a, a work a dinner for the holidays. And we were like drinking and there were a manager. It was 1 a.m. and I just let it go. And I started crying, telling that I, I couldn't live with it anymore. That I, it, it was actually like hurting my, my mental health every day. And he was like, oh, 
we know he's not like the he, he does like make those kind of com comments with but there were no women in this position before because there is no not much women in my in my company we are four <laughs> and i was in i was the only one in like the low position and i i'm the youngest and so i was the most subjected to those kind of remarks and they said oh we know that he doesn't have any tact and that he makes that kind of comments but everybody knew that he didn't like mean to get he didn't mean for me to get that bad he didn't mean for me to be not feeling well so he said okay i'll talk to him tomorrow he talked with him the next day and i never heard anything from him again he never did anything against me he still talks to me and we talked really normally right now i'm not like super friends with him because we are like 50 years apart and we have nothing in common and yeah we 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 are not friends but great coworkers and when i had a trouble and i needed his help he helped and like he didn't hold a grudge against me because of it i don't hold a grudge against him because of it but it was like three months really weird <laughs> yeah i can imagine but that's a very nice ending to this story yes that's why I'm. I feel, yeah, I feel comfortable telling it because, because, right now I'm still at that job. Is still my coworker, and we get along fine. We're not best friends, but fine. And he stopped every comments. Yeah. Okay. So he learned, maybe, or at least he is not saying them to you. Who knows what he's doing when he, the boss is not there or so supervising him. Uh, that actually reminds me of one of my bosses. Uh, it's like and he never did anything inappropriate to me. I actually found that he was kind of uh, uh, rude. I think it's like a typical Finnish guy, older guy who n never talks much and is just working, 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 working. And he had a wife and she was maybe 20 to 25 years younger than him. And uh, she was working at the same place. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. I, I learned later that um, they both left their spouses for each other. And when you looked at them, it's not like you could see some cracks maybe, but that's not uh, the, um, the story. The story is that I was working with the wife and the husband. And one day at work when his wife is not there, the owner is talking with his friends about women. And the owner says, I think the most important thing in marriage is to get a wife that is fuckable to you. That's the main thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that's so horrible of you to say when everyone knows your wife. Like, she has to be a good lay. That's the main thing in marriage. I hope you are taking notes. <laughs> oh my God, because I, I think it's important, but I don't think it's the main thing. I think that it's kind of weird that it's the main thing for him. Maybe it's why she's 25 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not supposed to be the main thing in marriage. You have to like be able to have a conversation with your spouse. I hope so. You're not just going to fuck every day. <laughs> There's nothing to say, but the chemistry is amazing. Yeah. She's dumb. She's dumb. She yeah, she's super dumb. I cannot stand her, but I can fuck her, so it's okay. Yeah, it was so uh, kind of hilarious listening to his wife talk about their marriage. Because um, she said that um, she was very excited that he had money and he partied. And because he had money, they had nice vacations and everything. And then she w was like... Yeah, but now that I look at him, he seems like an alcoholic. He's drinking every day. Like, okay, you guys are perfect for each other, I guess. Okay, so she's a gold digger 
And he's a man with money who wants to fuck young girls. Perfect. That's a happy couple. Yeah. <laughs> That's a match made in heaven. Yeah, you know, if they're both happy with it. I don't know, because I didn't dare to ask. <laughs> I, I actually know a couple where, like, it's really, like, well out there that he's gonna go and see other women. He just have to get the money home and she's gonna be a housewife and raise the kids. Everybody knows the the plan, like... They like each other, but I don't think there is love. They just said, yeah, okay, let's do this. I want to be a housewife. I want a housewife who don't say anything when I come home at five in the morning. And they say, okay, let's do this. And that's what they've been doing since. And I'm like, it's if it works for you, I'm, it's not for me, but if you like it, who am I to judge? Do your thing. Yeah, actually, I like this more than just like uh, trying to change the other person or just having an assumption in your head what a marriage should look like. I personally am polo amorous. I don't think I could stay with only one person for the rest of my life. I've had crushes to three people at the same time. And then I'm like, why should I have to choose? Because the society is telling me to. It doesn't make sense to me. So I let others do their own things and judge me. I think we should stop judging people. Only if they do like like illegal stuff. Like I, I think if you fuck a chicken, then you are weird and I am I'm allowed to say it because <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> you know? But if you love another human being and the other being is... A consenting adult. Yeah, they have to be an adult, you know. Because children cannot consent. And everyone who says otherwise is fucking insane. And I meant every word I said. No, because in France we have like this weird law that if you're more than four years old, four years old, if you don't say no... It's because you are okay with it. Okay. Silence is the sign of acceptance. Yeah. And like we had a case not like a few years ago where a girl who was like leaving middle school, like she was, I think, 12, something like, yeah, she was 12. And a guy who was 30 went to pick her up after school, then raped her. And because she was 12 and too fucking scared to be able to say no, they said he wasn't raped. She wasn't oh raped. Oh my, that's sick. For the law in French, she wasn't raped. A 30-year-old with a 12-year-old. I think the law in the US is a kind of fucked up about like the 18 years old and if there is a couple and one is 19 and the other one is 17, they cannot do what they want. I think this is not right. But a 30-year-old raping a 12-year-old and saying it's not rape, I think it's insane. That's insane. And, like, France was outraged at this story. And people learned about this law that said that if you are more than four, you have to be able to say no if someone is trying to rape you, even though you're not, you may not be able to understand what is happening to you right now. Happen. Yeah, yeah. No, a child doesn't understand. And that's actually an interesting thing because um, on the if we flip it, if you say no, it's a rape, right? Because in Finland, the laws changed uh, 2019 or they started um, to change the laws. So before that, if you didn't say anything, that was consent. I have had uh, problems with that. <laughs> And it's according to the law, nothing was done to me. And uh, according to the police officers who were interviewing me and according to the therapists I was working with, something was done to me. But according to the Finnish law, nothing happened. 
And it was a very, very, very hard two years of my life. But that's another a podcast. It has nothing to do with the work, actually. The, the donkey has drowned again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, obviously another podcast because I have stories too. Mm. Because every girl has one or multiple yeah. ones. I know, I know being spit on the face or something and it's okay if the guy is angry we don't deserve anything we are women we are objects remember that women objects not human beings not thinking people objects property of men i wish all of you are again making notes this is some important information right here Obviously, we are being sarcastic. Yeah, if you want to be happy in this world, stop believing that you are a human being if you are if you are a woman. Because other people won't. I'm fucking sick of it. And I want it to stop now. And I don't want to hand, I don't want to wait for the people to realize how dumb they are. I just want to change it right now. I'm sick of it. Sorry. That's a huge tangent. But I'm mad. <laughs> I'm so mad. I, I feel you. Yeah, but it's it's uh, it's not actually a huge tension because it's what's what's happening to me in the workplace. It's related to that. That because women are so used to just take it without saying that they don't like it because they're afraid to lose jobs to lose peer um, recognition and to be the one who's, who spoke out or to be the one who's like, oh, she's the one who's always speaking about this. She's not funny. She's not taking the joke. <laughs> the, job, the joke is not funny. If it's funny just for you, it's not funny at all. Yeah. And like hiding behind, just like it was a joke. It's a getaway for the like the sayer. You don't actually have to mean it as a joke, but it's a great save. Yeah, and actually, I've embraced my my side and the way people think about me. And in in the workplace over the years, people always saw me as like the crazy feminist who's always talking about human rights and and women's rights and stuff like that and I'm the bus kill and I'm everything like that. And at first I was like, oh no, please don't see me that way. And now I'm just like, I don't give a hoot. <laughs> you are the ones with something wrong in your mind. It's not me. And I'll spend every day, every occasion in my life to try to educate you. Because sometimes in my workplace, I hear some crazy stuff. Like there is a guy who came in PJs because his girlfriend wouldn't want hiring his clothes. What? No. Yeah, because his girlfriend didn't want to hire his clothes. And he was like, I'm not going to do it. And if she doesn't do it, it's not going to get done. And I, I just said, couldn't you do it? He said, I'd rather pay someone than do it myself. Then pay her. And I was like... You're insane, dude. And another time he said like, oh, look at me. I'm so good because I've cleaned the bathroom. And I'm like, who did it for seven years, you asshole? Mm. Did you cheer on her every week when she did it? Did you? Yeah. Oh, my God. If you didn't, you deserve no cheer for doing it once. And did you do any other household work? <laughs> I don't think it does any. You know, his girlfriend used to like pack lunches for him. He has such no regard for her that he let them rot in our fridges. No, he didn't. So she, so she stopped doing them. She stopped feeding him any leftovers or any meals that she was prepping for him because she was like, you never eat them. I put work and efforts and money into your meals and you just throw them away. And he's like, hoo, boo, hoo, I don't have food anymore. And I'm like, you deserve it. You deserve it. 
I have so many of these stories as well. Well, well actually, three of my exes were like this. And that's another podcast. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let the bridges burn. And just to finish, on the, it still worked, but like he was t- telling his bathroom thingy and... And then he said that he never does laundry because he cannot use the laundry, uh, the washing machine. He cannot use it. And I'm like, do you think we are born with the knowledge of using a washing machine? (laughs) It comes with being a woman. (laughs) It comes with the (laughs) cheeks. Do you think we are born with the knowledge that it's in our genes that we just learn magically how to use it? And I'm like... We we are looking at the manual and we learn every fucking machine that we get. We learn, we have to learn a, a new. And I said that and my boss was there and he started to say, oh, I don't know how my own works. And I'm like, oh, oh no, that's my boss. That's not the same. But I talked to my guns and I'm like, you're an engineer. <laughs> like... <laughs> You actually create stuff. You cannot figure out a washing machine. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just lazy. Yeah, it's too sophisticated, sophistic, sophisticated. And I'm like, who cares? She can do it. You can do it too. And I stuck to my guns, but I I was really scared after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't like that, I guess, because this is such like little regard. To the woman's free time after work. It's like do all the household work so that the guy can relax. Add children to this mix. Like the woman is cooking, doing all the laundry, all the cleaning and child caring and going to work. And the guy is like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. No, it's because they think they need free time. Like they're like, I need to chill out after my work. And I'm like, I need it too, guy. I'm, I need it too. You're not alone with needing free time and not doing anything after work. <laughs> but I he, I need to feed you. Nothing, No one will do it if I don't do it. So I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, but that's what they can use against us. Because I have tried going on strike, not cleaning, for example. And everything is left on the tables. In, in one of my ex-relationships... The guy, he liked to play all the time. And there were like plates, there were piles of clothing. They are all the wrappers from everything he has eaten since the past two weeks on the floor around the one bench where he is spending time. Because I stopped picking up after him and I was going insane because it didn't bother him at all, but it was bothering me greatly. And when... I tried suggesting him different systems of cleaning, for example. He would just always shut me down. He w- And I was like, for example, saying that maybe we could clean 15 minutes each day at the end of the night or before going to sleep so that we combined clean for half an hour. No, not going to do that. Well, how about we like um, alternate who cleans what? No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, How about you do all the dishes so that I can do something else? No, I'm not going to do that. Nothing was okay. It was horrible. It was very, very taxing doing the household work. The only time I can remember that he did laundry was when he was mad at me. Uh, I can't sleep if there is a very noisy machine or music or something on the background. I wake up and he was mad at me. So he started the laundry machine when I was sleeping still. Like, this is so malicious also. That's petty. That's super petty. I know. And then he can be like, I'm doing the laundry. Like, yeah, you are. This is what it's about. Like, this is about the household work now. Like, you uh, were mad at me and got an epiphany and you are like, yes, now I want to do the laundry that you haven't done for two years while we have been together. Of course, you just wanted to do the laundry today. I hear you, dude. Yeah, actually, I've been like very 
upfront in my current re relationship when we started dating i was like this is my rules 50 50 on the household household work anything different than that it's go not gonna pass by me i'm gonna get mad and i don't want to get mad and if i get mad in my relationship it's not gonna work so we have an agreement i'm doing the cooking and uh, i'm doing like grocery shopping because i'm cooking it's easier and he does everything else cleaning and laundry and he does the washing the dishes and it works for us uh, sometimes i give a hand and sometimes he does also in the cooking so it's not like super rigid where like it's my area and i cannot give i i cannot ask for help or i cannot give help in any other areas but it works for us and mm. we know when to do it the only thing i can say is i don't want to be cliche but <laughs> same my guy doesn't have the same standards for cleaning as me and sometimes he's like i'm like he, we need to clean and he's like no it's okay and since it's his job, I don't, I don't want to do it, but I'm going insane. I'm like, just clean your stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. Scrap the sink, please. <laughs> no, the dishes is okay. The, the most he does is sometimes he has a glass of water or a drink in front of the TV and he just leave it there or have a snack and leave the packaging there and i'm oh like my just, God. Just, the trash is just near you just go put it in the trash please i i can hear i can like see my boyfriend in that as well it's um like he has this habit of leaving the plastic things like the random areas of the house and then at some point during the week i just usually go and pick everything up and put them to trash I feel like our system works well. Uh, we have a dog, or well, I have a dog. Maybe she deserves an introduction at some point because she's uh, my little baby girl. She's the beautifulest. I know this word doesn't exist, but she's the most beautiful. <laughs> and the most well-trained. Oh my God, I love your dog. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I worked a lot with her on that regard. Um, like in our relationship, we never divided the household work. He just picked it up by himself without me having to tell. Like if I'm hungry or if I'm doing something else or I'm editing or anything, food just magically appears, uh, prepares itself. Or I come home and the dog has been taken out and the vacuuming has been done. The toilet is scrubbed, dishes are done. And I do the same for him. When he's at work and I have nothing that day, I clean and cook and it's working very well. And actually, I was, I think I kind of fell in love with him. Um, we had been going out less than two months, I think. And I have a habit of doing tricks with my dog and I had a cat back then. I found him in the kitchen doing the same tricks with my pets he had been watching me like the hand signals and everything that the pets can do and he was doing them by himself without prompting with the animals and this i would just started crying immediately he was so sweet and just like doing it without me having to ask was so such a big thing for me and that's kind of what let me to fall for him it's the small attentions that do everything um in the beginning of covid we were in lockdown and i was skyping my friends it was one of the first or even the first one that we did like and i was talking to them and i hadn't hit that day he just puts he really hates cooking like he really hates it and he put a plate of pasta next to me. And it was like the, the cutest attention because he hates it. I know he hates it. 
So the fact that he went out of his way to like make me food while I was trying to connect with my friends over the internet in this weird time, it was the perfect thing. Mm, that's heartwarming. Yeah, it, it was just perfect. Yeah, that sounds very good. Yeah, it was a nice touch. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend usually does coffee in the mornings. And not today, because I woke up so early. Like, I still haven't recovered from the fact that I actually woke up at nine and I got so much done today. <laughs> we are now recording. It's in the evening. We started at nine o'clock in the evening. And usually I have been awake seven to five hours at that point. I had a full day to do things before recording. I'm up since six in the morning. I'm getting kind of tired and I have to do it all over again tomorrow, 6 a.m. again. Yeah, I can imagine. I actually, um, yeah, we have talked about this in real life, but I can't fall asleep. I have two rhythms. One is I go to sleep between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning. And the other rhythm is that I go to sleep between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock in the evening. I have nothing in between. If I have to wake up at seven in the morning, I have been going to sleep at two o'clock. It's a weird thing. I've had this since I was 13 or something, very young. And uh, because I'm working in a karaoke bar, usually not, of course, now because um, certain diseases, I work in the evening. So I keep this night rhythm all the time. It doesn't make any sense for me to try and change it during the week. The only sad thing is that I don't have time to play every day or like play every instrument every day because I'm waking up so late that I just don't, I physically can't before it's too late for me to play the piano, for example. Yeah, you don't want to bother your neighbors, right? Yeah, that actually reminds me of one story when I got evicted. I'm going to tell you this story uh, in another podcast. We have so much stories. Yes. Remember that when you wonder if there is a few more podcasts coming or a lot more. We have hundreds, thousands of stories to tell. It's insane. We have crazy lives, you know. Uh, most of my friends actually told me that I needed to write books with an S at the end, like multiple books about my life, because it's crazy. I have so much stories. And since I'm a really bad writer, I'm doing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I feel like I have 50 lifetimes already in my one 30 years on this planet. I am grateful, though, because I wouldn't be this person if I didn't have the experiences I did. Yeah. We are old ladies. We're young on the outside, but in our minds, we are quite old. Actually, today someone thought I'm 22 years old. No way! That's good or bad? I don't know. People want to be older or younger. Yeah, that's true. I think you, you said it with, with a smile, because we see each other even though you cannot see us. Mm -hmm. And so I think you liked it. Of course, because <laughs> I'm 30. I'm third turning 31 in a couple of months and uh, it's a common occurrence last summer when I was working at the bar people were asking me if I'm 19 or 20 years old I find it extremely hilarious it's it's weird because people sometimes give me much more years or much less but never my actual age like sometimes people will say I'm 26 by the way Sometimes people will say, like, I'm 21, 22, or sometimes people will say I'm 30. And I'm like, this is a huge difference. <laughs> I don't understand because I'm not wearing makeup at all right now. So my face doesn't change a bit. So I just don't know. One guy at my work, going back to workplace. Ooh, coming back. <laughs> <laughs> One guy at my work who's older than me. We were chatting and he said, but you're older than me. And I'm like, no, I'm only <laughs> younger than you. And I was so mad and I was like, it's not fair. I'm not that old. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was mad and I was like, it's not fair. It's not nice. But it just gave me like two years more, I think. But I was like, no, I'm younger. <laughs> yeah, the, talking about makeup, I have two settings, uh, zero makeup and the makeup haul. Uh, the gothic slut. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's that's my settings. Yeah, I do a big smoky eye and like bold lipstick and everything or nothing at all. I don't want to be bothered if I'm not doing the full thing. Yeah, exactly. And actually, uh, during the summertime, I don't usually use makeup unless I'm going out. I want to have the little bit of vitamin D I can gather from the Finnish sun. <laughs> <laughs> during because in the winter time i'm not going to see the sun anyway so i might as well uh, look like i'm going to to a portal every time i leave my house and i have my gothic clothing so it actually fits my style you have to go to my instagram if you want to see more yeah we'll link it in stuff wherever you listen or watch us we'll link stuff <laughs> yeah you, you've you've got ways to get in touch with us. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, I think that would be a very good spot to end this podcast. Uh, do you have anything else to add? No, I think we've got around the subjects because we have a huge tangent. We started with workplace. We did something else in the middle. <laughs> I've kind of ed ended on workplace a bit, <laughs> and now it's over. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we revived the donkey a little bit at the end. <laughs> yeah, I was able to do it. <laughs> yes. Thankfully. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we can still keep the title and say it was about workplace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in that case, that's all for this episode. We invite you to follow us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. You can find us on any podcast platform. If you have any questions or something you would like us to address, you can email us at theoutspoken2 at gmail.com. We thank you and we'll catch you in the next episode where we are going to talk about our worst relationship experiences. Talk. Hear you later. Is that a thing? Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hear you later is I think it's the new sentences. Hear you later and bye. <laughs> bye bye. Dun, dun, dun. In the next episode of the Outspoken Two. So in this five year span I managed to gather the trash from my city and date each one. <laughs> <laughs> 